Lynn, founding member of Sane Energy Project. I'm here tonight on behalf of the nearly 4,000 and counting residents who have signed petition letters opposing this pipeline. There's been hundreds of reasons why not to do this project. And I live here. I don't know where you guys live. <laughs> My name is Jennifer Davis. I live on Greenwich Street in the West Village, 12 blocks from where we gather tonight, and even closer to where this pipeline will enter Manhattan. I'm the superintendent of a building in which I live, the, of the building in which I live, and I speak tonight in the interest of the 250 residents and shareholders of my building. Also, we're going to bring in this pipeline into the middle of a major population center like Manhattan, which I can't even believe is being discussed, frankly. I don't know why we're even considering it densely populated uh, neighborhood. My politics are probably middle of the road to lean towards conservative. I work in the IT industry. I'm about progress. I'm about technical fixes. I'm about all sorts of, you know, I'm about free trade and, and all sorts of things like that. And, you know, even I'm opposed to something. <laughs> uh, Borough President Stringer cannot support this project as it is currently planned. We see the possibility for a new era of economic growth, one that must be based on policies that sustain and expand the environmental resource base. What's happened to that? Has the need for profit, I mean, it's just exploiting, it's raping our resources, it's polluting everything along the way, it's not being accountable, it's not being held responsible, and it's leaving victims that are powerless and have to absorb the financial responsibility and everything else. Okay, I'm Billy. I'm from uh, Occupied Wall Street. And we are occupying Wall Street because democracy in this country has failed. And if you guys have noticed, and women have noticed, not a single person has spoken for this pipeline. <laughs> to whom are we concerned? And let me know that this issue of natural gas and hydrofracking concerns us all. I come here from Occupy Wall Street with many of my comrades here today. Um, I came to Liberty Plaza to fight corporate greed and capitalist exploitation. The fact that this pipeline is even being considered after a similar, ex similar one exploded in California and after the highly toxic effects of fracking has been exemplified over and over again is a prime example of the insane corporate and political disregard for life on this planet. My name is Ethan Buckner. I speak on behalf of thousands of students from PowerShip New York, tens of thousands of young people from the Energy Action Coalition, and hundreds of thousands of people who identify with the Occupy Wall Street movement. We are saying enough. Enough to corporate manipulation, economic exploitation, and ecological genocide. The proposed Spectra pipeline is a stunning example of the type of disregard for public health, economic security, and environmental integrity that has sent millions of citizens into the streets around the world. We're just seeking to overturn the obscene uh, citizens united ruling, which has created a situation where we have to fight this corporate disavowal of the planet. A corporate control of government function will not guarantee future, the lives of future generations in this country. I personally and many of us here have lived through one of the worst catastrophes in our country's history. We will not be put in that situation again, especially by our fellow citizens and elected officials who are alleged to be working in our best interests. We want and need leaders to guide us based on facts, logic, and the truth, not leaders that can be bought by the highest bidder. America has now become the pump and dump nation of the world. These companies don't care, they have no national interest, they don't care about us, and they're gonna pump and dump and squeeze every last drop out of our natural resources, and that includes our water, our air, and our health. An endorsement of any pipeline that includes binding precedent agreements similar to the one signed by Spectra is an endorsement of the environmental pillage that results from high volume horizontal hydraulic fracture. I don't understand how Governor Cuomo in his hypocrisy can on one hand be for the closing of Indian Point and then on the other hand be for fracking. A uh, resident of upstate New York where you will be carrying the gas through this pipeline from. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in Pennsylvania to see what hydrofracking does to a community. 
to see what it does to the environment, to see what it does to people's homes. They can't drink the water that comes out of their, out of their taps. And you are about to um, mainline an ecological disaster for the rest of the state by creating an easier way to get that gas down into the city. It's dangerous. There's a price to pay for it in upstate New York. And you are facilitating an ecological disaster of our water and our air. Oil and gas drilling releases 2.3 million tons of smog-forming pollution each year. In a state where more than 1.3 million people suffer from asthma, that's just unacceptable. The extraction, the processing, producing pollution and waste all cause cancer. The miners, the refiners have high rates of cancer. And we all live downstream. We do not need fossil fuels or dirty energy, or what I wish we would all start calling it toxic energy. And then there's a huge elephant in the room, radiation from the Marcellus shale gas, which is 2 to 15 times the radiation of any other shale. Radon 226 is a half-life of 3.8 days, and when coming from 100 miles away, would reach our burning point, which is the gas stoves, appliances, etc. with that time to adhere to the cellular structure of the, of, of the lung and cause lung cancer. Next to smoking, radon is the most potent cause of lung cancer. The radon and natural gas coming from the shale, mi shale mix together and travel together, together as the gas is piped to customers. This is a serious health hazard. I think that if the mayor's office and DEP and other city agencies look at this today with the very issues that Goosty was raising about the radioactivity of the gas, it is not safe to use it. That must be part of this study. This must be postponed. Um. I'm going to list off my points of opposition, uh, but I want you to imagine your loved, your loved ones as being directly affected by your stewardship of New York City. All right, one, potential for gas explosion due to shoddy workmanship or other human error is high. There's a potential loss of life that is enormous. There are 10 schools or uh, daycare centers in this area, eight playgrounds, 13 churches or religious institutions, 38 restaurants, many hotels, and many tourist destinations, including a highly popular High Line. Uh, there will be emission of carcinogens uh, via the metering stations. There will be emission of radon inherent in the Marcellus-derived gas at point of use. There will be inherent destruction of the environment in and around New York City due to increased fracking. Uh, by constructing a pipeline, you are mainlining an addictive, carcinogenic, endocrine-disrupting, neurotoxic process into the lives of 9 million people. Air pollution from fracking will negate any benefit that you may get from burning methane instead of heating oil. This defies all common sense. To site a 30-inch pipeline in a highly populated area is courting disaster. Last year, there were 11,038 incidents regarding gas, and that's one accident every 263 miles of pipeline in this country. With Spectra's poor track record of environmental spills and explosions, placing a high-pressure, high-volume pipeline in and around heavily populated cities should never, under any circumstances, be uh, considered. This pipeline is a huge and dangerous step in the wrong direction. We have the technology now to power the planet with renewable and sustainable energy sources. We must begin working toward that end. We have green solutions to all your energy problems. Solar, wind, wave, tidal, geothermal, hydroelectric. We have mechanisms of storing energy. We have solutions to our economy. Stop subsidizing dirty oil. Let's subsidize renewable energy. People always say environmentalists are killing jobs. The NRDC says one million green jobs are available now if we started committing today. Cars can run on garbage, hemp oil, veggie oil. We can power our buildings with wind, solar, hydro energy, tidal energy. In Germany now and in Europe, they've had 30,000 buildings built since 1995 that use 80 to 90% less energy uh, and for heating and cooling and 60 to 70 percent less energy overall. This is an available technology, Passive House Institute. There are people being trained in the city today in Brooklyn, New York City, Manhattan. They're certified. They can do buildings like this right now. They can be retrofitted. 
In New York City, 60% of our energy use is in buildings. So I can tell you right now that whatever energy calculation was developed for this 800 decatherms, it's going to be way lower once we make any kind of reasonable effort toward conserving energy first and foremost. Anyone here in the room, if you have a child, raise your hand. Anyone? Up here. Good. If you have a grandchild, raise your hand. That's why we're here. This is about the future. This is about our planet. This is about the decisions we make today. The people who lived here first, the Native Americans, had a saying that if it was good for seven generations, it could be done. We don't even have to go to seven generations. It's not good for this generation, let alone seven generations. All of this is really about energy. Um, and we know that we basically need to be uh, moving towards renewable energy. That's where our future lies. Uh, the, the world is in peril right now. That's what our scientists are telling us. And we need to listen to them. And we need to implement, we need to demonstrate that we're listening to them actually in actions. We're not gonna let this happen, okay? So we can stop this now, or we can experience the civil disobedience that will occur when this project starts to occur.